In today's video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to string a tennis racket. I'm going to use my um, older crank machine that I had for 30 years now, and it's still working perfectly. It doesn't matter if you have a new electronical or another kind of machine, it's still the same principles, almost. I'm going to string my own tennis racket. I play with a head Boom Pro and I'm using the head hawk touch strings that I really like. And um, let's start. I'll show you how to mount the racket and then I'm going to show you how to count the strings, measure the strings. Let's start uh, mounting a racket. I already put it on, center it a little bit. And uh, I will tighten the screws here, head on bottom. And then I will tighten these on the sides a little, and this one. I don't want to tighten too hard, but I'm going to go over this again, tighten a little bit. Make sure it's in the center. Yes, now it's tight and nice. And as earlier, I put this to 22 kilos. So now the racket is mounted. And I put the tension to 22 kilos. And I will string with um, two pieces, so four nuts. And um, yeah, let's count the mains. On this racket, it's 16 mains and 19 crosses. So I will count 16 here. One. And then I cut it. On some rackets, you will start at the top and some at the bottom. On uh, this Head Boom Pro, you will start at the bottom because, as you can see, it's one, two, three, four five, six holes. If it would be in eight holes, we would start it at the top. But since it's six holes, we start at the bottom. And uh, take these two ends, put it through. Like that and make them equal and then I like that. And I will have this clamp on the bottom here as close as I can. I tighten it. I tighten the bottom, the base. And then I will use the starting clamp. I put this to the side of the clamp. This is just a protection in case I haven't tightened these clamps tight enough and it will slide in here. It will make some marks and, and damage the string. So this is a protection. Okay, let's start. This one up here, and I like to do three mains before I switch side. I 
and always release the bottom of the clamp first, the base, and then top of the clamp. done three of them, I switch side. So now I take this side with the starting clamp, tighten, take the starting clamp off, base and clamp. So on this side we'll do six. Now do the other side to the last string. So let's just jump to that. So on this racket you want to jump over hole number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the ninth hole. And same in the bottom, at the bottom. I wait to tension this string. I'll tell you why later.
jump over the eight hole and eight hole on the bottom. Okay, so these two are the last ones. So, and I'm going to tie a knot here. So what I want to do is increase the tension about 10%. So I will put this on 24.2, somewhere around there. And then I tighten it. It's just because when I tie the knot, I will lose some tension. If you have an electrical machine, you will have a knot function. That's nice to have. But it works like this as well. Okay. So now I want to tie the knot. I want to go into that hole. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh hole on this racket. And I'm going to use a plier here, a tongue, like that. I get my starting uh, clamp ready. So the string is on the left side. So I want to go over the string here, under, and up through the loop. And I go under, over, under and up, through the same hole. And I will put here. I will hold in a clamp like this. Don't hold it like that. And I push up and in. Out, up and in. And then I just take this one. Do the same thing. Up. To the head, up and to the throat. And I hold the tension here. Release and open. I do the same thing on the other side. So now the string is on the right side. I'll go over the string. I'll go under and up, through. I'll go over, under, and up through the same loop. And I'll put tension on this one here. Sorry, on this one. And I'll go up to the head. Down, up to the head, and up and down. And I'll take this one here. Up and down. Hold pressure, release, and open. And now we'll cut the strings. So just a couple, just half of a centimeter or something. Just like that. Okay. Let's start with the crosses. So it was 19 crosses. So let's count one, two, Okay. There's a different couple of ways to start. I will show the one I like and um, 
that means you need to have a starting clamp. So some people start at the third hole. So it would be like one, two, three, the professionals. But I like to start just on the top here. Makes it easier. So it's up, under, up, under. It doesn't matter if you start over or under on the first one. So what I will do here is make sure I have enough string. Yes. And then I put the starting clamp over here. Just like that. But I'm not going to tighten this string yet. I'll go through another one. So it will be under here because this one is under. So I have to make sure this one is over and I continue like, like this. So this is a difficult part in the, as a beginner. And my hands are really sweaty so. So it wasn't easy here either. So make sure you pull up and through, up, through. You don't want to just stretch the string like that because then you make marks on the string and the coating of the string will disappear. Yes. So I could tighten this one now. I would tighten both of them. But what I would like to do is put the third one in as well. And since this is over, I have to go under, up, and then I can go downwards like this. It makes it much easier and faster. And then I do it like this, like a wave. I leave this much because I'm going to tighten this side of the string, tighten those two at the same time. And I have to change the tension again to 22 kilos. Just like that. So what happened now is I tightened both of them and this clamp is holding the string. I just have to fix the clamp a little bit. Yes, so then I go through like this and I could tighten this one but I want to wave another one before I tighten it because it's much easier to wave in. So this is on top, I had to go under, up, under, up and you go, oops, and you go downwards like this. And you always want to start your stringing on the top of the head, never at the bottom, because then it might break here. I've seen that happen before in some rackets. So that's why you have to string with two pieces on the head um, rackets and yonex. Or you can do around the world, but yeah, I like this method the best. So I tighten this one here. I think I just skipped to the end. Uh, I'll show you the end because this is the same. Um, all the way through. So you just have to keep practicing. In the beginning it will take probably three hours to string your first racket and you probably have done one or two mistakes. It's normal. 
and uh, the better you get, you're probably around 20 minutes, 15 minutes, depends. If I had an electrical machine, it would be a little bit faster. I'll probably do it in 15 minutes. But for me, it doesn't matter. It's, it takes me 20 minutes to string a racket. And uh, yeah, as long as you try to do as perfect as possible, uh, you will get the same result. Even though it's not in an electrical machine. Okay, I skipped the van now. So at the end here, I got one, two, three left. It's hard to do one cross head ahead. So I have to do one at a time now because the string is shorter and uh, less space to move. So I tighten this one now. So this is a little bit more trickier to go up and under one at a time. This over and uh, oops, you want to make sure it's not tangled because it's not good for the string. So we really sweaty, so I have to use the plier here. Okay, so this is the last one. I have to go 10% higher, so 24.2. It's a little bit too long, so I will cut it off. So on this head racket, I want to tie it on the crosses here. The nice thing about the new rackets, it's uh, marked where you want to tie off the crosses and mains. But on all the ones, it's not. So I do the same. Um, not this before. This is why you need to.
I'll pull the string towards there and up and towards me. Out, up and towards me. I'll take this one. The same that way and this way. I keep the tension here. Release. And then I cut it. So, on this last one here, I will tighten at 24.2 as well. So another method you could do is um, using a starting knot, but I like this way better because then all my knots will be the same tension. So I'm going to tie off it on this one. This side. Over, under, up, and through, like that. I'm really sweaty. Then I go. through that hole again, just like that, and I tighten. Take this side here, pull up, oh. I'll take this one. Hold it. Open this. So now when I'm done, I want to correct the crosses and mains so it's not going like this with rings. This is not too bad actually. So you really want to try to get them as straight as possible when you Um, pull tension on the string. If you have a string like this and pull tension, you will actually lose some tension. So make sure it's good. I've seen um, stringers do that, and that's not good. So I like to go a little bit up and down. Um, and we can get an owl like that as well. It's yeah, a little bit more tricky to do, but it works. Yes, now it's done. So open here. And open here. Do the same on the other side. Yes. So what I like to do after a string is measure my tension with one of these tools, string meter. And since it's 16, I can put it here, the string size. And I'll put this in the middle. And I can check my string job right there yeah it's around 22 so that's perfect yes so i like to check my string job after i've done it to see if it yeah it's around 
what I want.